solution. He's in every breath I breathe, but still struggle through pollution. So, uh, somebody mention me, please. Somebody mention me. Somebody mention me, please. Somebody mention me. Somebody mention me, please. Somebody mention me. My friend told me that Jesus was one of three things. A joke in popular culture, a sign that you're still a slave if you're black, a ploy politicians use to make sure gays can't get married. She told me the church was led by men who don't take the advice they give others each Sunday and that she saw so many shepherds who were more lost than their flocks that she would never be a sheep again. She said she tried hard, once believing she could find the answers to the universe's questions in a sanctuary. She sat hungry for a dish heavier than some get you through the week inspirational quote. She needed answers, but found blank chalkboards of broken Bible verses. She started thinking religion was more destructive than helpful. To her, Christ just became a metaphor of good decision making. You take what you want from his stories, but you don't believe his power will last. To her, Jesus was a carpenter that built stuff from Ikea. It wasn't as strong as advertised. He would buckle if she rested on them. Couple that with bad stories from pulpits and confusion about Christian origins. Her doubt grew and sin started to justify as human nature until she thought of church and therefore God as something that she should educate herself beyond. Now she speaks of karma and the universe as if they're sacred as if the destination of her soul depends on vibes that are good and as if God is a puzzle that every religion only has a piece of because she couldn't see his wholeness in the faith that she grew up in. And I feel some type of way because her story represents a generation more skeptical and critical than ever. And God, with his arms stretched toward them, I imagine him scanning the minds of millions who think he's one option among many. And I wonder if his thoughts shoot down heaven's hallways like boats of light, like the belly of a crying mother, packed with love and sorrow, anger and heartbreak. I wonder if he hears 2017 confuse his name with energy when he orders energy to initiate. What if the strength and power he uses to shape the universe is the same strength he's using now to hold himself back from destroying it. I wonder how strong his hands are gripping his last threads of patience like we do concert tickets, sending signs to souls that refuse sign language, waiting for hearts to turn to and not away from him. Why is God slap boxing with America's disillusionment? Why are people so turned off? Is it science? New age, politics, suffering, black awakening, deceit, enlightenment, history, politics, sin, faith, red, white, blue, up, down, is it them? Or, or is it me, us, the very churches that they've tried and never met him at? I don't wanna voice what I have to say next, but I love the church and I think we need to look at ourselves because if we are his image bearers, have we done our best to give our world a clear image of who Jesus is? Let me rephrase that. What if people are searching for God's likeness elsewhere because many of our saints refuse to reflect God's likeness in their lives? What if our lack of seriousness has finally caught up with us? What if my friends feel the need to find separate tracks of faith because of our churches that have been barely on track? And worse than that, what if our false gospels like prosperity, super condemnation, and super grace are more dangerous than just half-truths? What if they cause more confusion? And what if I could trace back the godless beliefs of my friends to the very sanctuaries where these godless gospels are practiced? Let's try the prosperity gospel.
A fortune cookie Christianity that only tells you good things about yourself to keep you coming back to a restaurant of GMOs. God missing outreach. A vending machine Jesus. A vending machine Jesus that spits out blessings if you put dollars in. What if my friends who swear by karma put out good energy now because they only heard sermons preached about God's energy being focused on their good days? Our bank statements, our seasons, and not our souls. No wonder why when the bodies of shot black kids hit newspapers, it makes folks lose their faith. If we only know God as giver of increase and not as anchor in suffering, then we'll drift when our seed offerings come back void. If we cite Jesus and the early church apostles as examples of success and fail to mention that most of them were killed, when death knocks on the door of our people, they'll push prosperity to the fire, not knowing that there's a greater God beyond it. Next up. Super condemnation, the judgment heavy, love absent, burden filled faith system that brings more fear than God to man. Robbing hearts of the opportunity to be a new creation by judging the struggles in their journey. If we make our churches unsafe places where people can't realistically share where they're at, then they'll see the world as a more forgiven place than God's side. And I think that's what happened. A judgment-free culture that came out of churches that turned scriptures to oppressive powers, manipulating spiritual things to control men out of fear. But our lives are not a game of hide and seek with God out to get man. Instead, the gospel is God's rescue mission behind enemy lines to seek and destroy the sin that keeps us separated. But if we choose to portray God as if he somehow gets pleasure from payback, we make hell sound petty and diminish the lengths God traveled to save us from it. Every Westboro mindset that singles out certain sins and makes it seem like that's all God's here to judge, y'all make me sick. Worst off, it fails to mention that God is focused on saving as many as possible, healing them of more than just the sins that match your prejudice. Christ came for every break and every tear in humankind. He's here to fix our frames holistically, not just in the ways that make you uncomfortable. Lastly, Super grace, the super relatable, nobody's perfect, relax and enjoy religion that's as comfortable as coffins with coffee bars. The incorrect answer to super condemnation where God is friend and not Lord, help and not holy, where relationship with Christ is portrayed as an H&M photo shoot party and your only requirement for salvation is to dress nice, where the focus is on relatability and not commitment. Sin is brushed past for the sake of numbers. I don't know which one is worse. The absence of love from condemnation heavy mindsets or the fake love that's scared to hurt feelings with truth. In our quest, in our quest to show that our ministries don't hate, we have to know that we will offend. We will cause anger. And if we're doing it right, then we will be rejected like Jesus. The gospel is beautifully offensive. And when I became a Christian, I signed up to be hated. The problem recently has been that we have not been despised for the right reasons. And I don't know, maybe my hypothesis is off, but what I'm getting at is this. People say that the church has lost its impact on the world. That's just not true. The church will always impact the world but it's up to us to decide whether that impact is beautiful or horrible. Because if we can lead men to Christ, I imagine that we can lead them away. And I wonder how many have been led away by my hypocrisy. Because this church that I've been critiquing, it's it's me, It's, it's us. We've been black lights because as we've shined our lights, they've seen our stains too. And no saint will ever have a perfect understanding of God's light. We will all fail in understanding, just like we fail in faith. But these words are not a call to be fake or to put on an act, but to try, fight to represent him. So that way, if people turn away from God, at least they'll know who they're choosing against be broken at the feet of Jesus, not broken away. 
As we shine our lights, they see our stains too. So let's also let them see us acknowledge our need for the same God that we preach and cling to the side of Christ, which is the only place where our stains and theirs could be made clean.